Today is January 30th, 2016. Joining us on the porch are Jim Schaefer and Becky Brennan. The best place for family. What are you waiting for? Where friendships run deeper. Come join us on the porch. So glad you're on the porch. And once again, you can come out of hibernation, that thing you do every week in between episodes of On the Porch Radio Hour, because we're back, and it feels so good. What didn't feel good today was the wind outside. It was awful cold. It was awful harsh. It blew really hard, and we lost a couple of branches on one of my favorite trees. Not because of the wind, though. Because after a long debate, many meetings with our lawyers, several ripped up contracts, and a couple of uh, notary publics that got very upset with us and left, we finally got one that would stamp and approve the rental of Jim Schaefer's hot air balloon. <laughs> I made a mistake a while back, and uh, I was really excited about having Jim Schaefer on the radio show. We were new to the scene. You know, we weren't as big as we are now. We were just starting out, and uh, I got really pumped, and I, uh, and I, got, I gathered up some money and uh, bought, uh, well, rented a, a hot air balloon. Actually, I didn't. I think I ended up taking um, some tips from a neighbor who, who had a hot air balloon, and Jim Schaefer stole it. But that we'll have to listen to that episode another time. But he, uh, we, we flew him in in the hot air balloon. Uh, and um, what was really cool is that we decided that when we rented this hot air balloon, we would cover it with some of that uh, silver like uh, the inside of your high school locker mirror paper stuff. So it's not glass, but it's, you know, it's reflective and you can see yourself. And uh, we, we had Jim fly in uh, into Liverpool and um, he picked up Becky Brennan um, in the giant uh, frequently. No, it, what is it? It's feeling authentically beautiful uh, hot air balloon. So it was a giant floating mirror so that everybody could see how wonderful they looked. And when he showed up, uh, Becky was a little sad because we didn't think ahead and uh, putting a giant light bulb shaped mirror in front of somebody might, you know, they, I think she thought that there was a fun house that actually landed on her, uh, on, on her lawn. Um, and there she was with a really large head and very small legs. And, uh, and, and her, her partner, Gary, just kind of stood on the lawn and laughed and laughed and pointed. And um, there, there, was some, there was some cleanup that needed to happen. Um, as we're finding, is pretty consistent when we get a hot air balloon in Jim Schaefer's hands. Um, there's always a lot of cleanup that needs to happen. So we're, um, we're coaching Becky through, and she thinks she can, she can hold herself together long enough for the interview. Uh, we're we're going to use the, the limbs off of the tree for firewood. And uh, we're going to pay the bills because we, we can't get the, the mirrored paper off of the side of the air balloon. I, I kind of glued it on there pretty tight. Some really neat epoxy. Um, but that's for another show, too. But I'm really pumped, as you can tell, I'm sure, to have Jim Schaefer on the porch once again. One of our biggest supports and one of our favorite musicians. Don't tell any of the other musicians because we might want them to come back sometime. Uh, he's promoting a new album. And Becky's here to promote all the really cool empowerment stuff that she's doing. And I'm really excited to talking to both of them. Uh, but until then, Jim Schaefer, you are on the porch.
before you're broken, laying on the ground. I know you're searching for answers that can't be found. I know you're praying for the pain to find the end. I know you're broken again. I hear you crying behind your wall. I hear you curse the day when evening falls. I know you tried so hard, but you can't bend. I know you're broken again. Life is so unkind, life is so unfair. Some search for gold, they want it all. Your only wish is just to run without a care and to laugh if you should fall. Your only wish is just to run without a care. Love to come if you should call. And you will smile But broken bones And time will surely mend And even broken hearts Can learn to love again Life is so unkind Life is so unfair Some search for gold They want it all your only wish is just to run without a care and a laugh if you should fall. Your only wish is just to run without a care. I hope you get it all. Thank you. Graduating in 2015 with her master's degree, Becky Brennan has uh, decided to kind of step out of the limelight and uh, come hang out with the rest of us folk <laughs> and be a guest on the porch, which is really exciting. <laughs> Becky, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I have an apology to make first before we get started, because in my intro, I started to say frequently, and I don't know where I was going with that. You, so, you should be frequently, authentically beautiful, right? Absolutely. Always. Yeah. So I like okay. that. Awesome. So what? Yeah, I like that. I'm going to change the name of your program. That's okay. Okay. So you have this event coming up. Uh, give us the. Um, I want to know what started the what what prompted the desire to have an event like this. Well, that's actually a really awesome question because. Um, my whole life, my, myself and a lot of people I knew struggle with body image issues and things like that. And a lot of this is prompted by the media, things we see every day, magazines, TV shows, you know, Victoria's Secret fashion show is a really popular one. And, you know, 
all those people are very beautiful in their own ways too, but they don't represent the normal general population, I would say, of women. So I kind of wanted to try to do something where all different shapes and sizes of women were represented and everybody felt like they were beautiful and not just what we see on TV and in the magazines. So that's kind of what the goal is of this and where that kind of started was, you know, thinking when I was in college, like we really could use something that you know, helps everyone feel awesome about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as as you've been um, developing this and as you've been working with other community agencies, and, and one of those community agencies, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making an assumption, uh, but you work for a counseling office. Yes. Uh, and, and so I'm assuming that you have, uh, I'm making a lot of assumptions, I apologize, uh, but you're making connections with other agencies in the in the community and and they're being part of this event and you know that kind of stuff so what are the resources for people that are um that you're that you're trying to connect with well, a big resource, which is actually what all the funds and anything that we kind of gather from this event is going to, is National Eating Disorders Association. Okay. So NIDA. And that's an organization that I have donated to many times in the past through other events that I've done as well. And they're a great resource for people who are struggling with eating disorders and things like that. So this event is kind of geared towards them. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that myself and another counselor that I work with work specifically with people with eating disorders. So that's kind of where all of the ideas are going to and we've contacted them to let them know that it's going to be sponsored for them so awesome very cool what um what are the the resources on campus where can people go that are students or maybe people that are part of the community that that are trying to to reach out and get some help well there's the um, awesome counseling center on campus, which yes. is located in Mary Walker Health Center, okay. um, and they have a staff of wonderful counselors there that are very helpful. Um, also, a club called Active Minds that I worked with mm -hmm. quite a bit in my undergrad. They work to banish the stigma on mental health, and they actually do a lot of um, advocating for you know eating disorders um, education as well. So they're really really awesome, and they can connect with resources like us, counseling and healing arts, and other agencies in the area too. So. Awesome. This is cool. So there, it, it seems like there's an excellent, uh, like a, a nice canopy of, of resources that people can tap into. Mm -hmm. um, and even if it, my experience has been um, in working with social services agencies that when somebody comes to, you know, an agency um, and I'm, and I'm in a position where I'm sorry, but the agency I'm working with can't offer that kind mm -hmm. of assistance, but I can point you in the right direction. Yes. And I feel like all of the places that you're naming have the ability and the backup and the resources to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's really cool. Um, how long have you been working on this um, this event? How long have you been working on developing it? Well, I've been working with my intern, Jenna, at my office since probably the middle of the summer. In, Ju okay. in July, we kind of started, it was our baby. We started to grow the ideas and brainstorm a little bit. Um, and I started working with a magazine called Scorch Magazine that's um, no editing done. It's all for body positive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a wonderful resource as well for this sort of thing. And I have a good friend who works for that magazine, and she kind of fed in with some ideas about how we can make a fashion show work and be really great. So that's been awesome to have that connection as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So you, you've got all of these things in place, and you um, – you, the the event the actual event is going to be taking place sometime in the spring yes right uh, so you you put you'll be putting almost a year into into getting this event uh, what is your um, what are your goals uh, like uh, when you think about having people attend the event mm -hmm. and with all the outreach that you're doing and the promoting like what are, what are your goals what kind of numbers of people are you trying to bring in to to help give this awareness thinking of a number it's hard to think of yeah you know a specific number but um i've done panels before for national eating disorders awareness week and we filled an auditorium and i know that every person who leaves there whether they learned something or they didn't they take away the experiences of the people who are telling their stories and that's kind of what i want to come from this is either someone who needs help gets the help they need they know a friend who needs help their friend gets help or they just walk away with a newfound love for themselves knowing that they're okay there's nothing wrong with their body they're perfect just the way they are that's right so yeah uh, so I, I have one last question for you, and it's it's probably 
I, I shouldn't qualify it. Uh, so I had a really, I was getting my hair cut today, mm -hmm. and I had this really interesting discussion about who was going to be on the show tonight and why I was excited about talking to you and, and, and talking about this event. And I made a comment about um, wanting to learn more about resources that men can access, men with uh, body image issues mm -hmm. and, and things that they're struggling with. And her response was uh, unfortunate because I feel like it's a, it's a really common response. Uh, and that is, do men really have body image issues? And I, you know, at that point I wanted to like jump out of the chair and be like, oh my God, yeah, we have to talk about this. Cause it's something that I've, um, have been interested in and invested in in the past. And, and I'm really, um, always trying to find those kind of resources and they are difficult to find because there's a lot of programs that, that sound fantastic. And then I, they're like, so any woman that you know is, you know, and it's very woman specific. And so my question is how, um, how are you able, are you able, is it really difficult to try to, um, to have that connection available at your event, to have resources to, to be able to point people in the right direction for, for males with body image stuff? Yeah, and that's a really, really good question because I hear that all the time. And then men who do struggle with that are nervous to come forward or nervous to talk about it because they don't feel like anyone will validate them that's right. in that situation, which it is so true. It's so real. It's so out there. Um, and I think that we definitely know of resources. And we actually talked about this in one of our first meetings is do we include men in this fashion show? Mm -hmm. And I think that if we're going to make it an annual event, I would love to integrate them more as we go. Mm -hmm. And the more that we kind of um, get this kind of settled down as an event. And I think as our first try, we wanted to focus on women, see how it went, and then kind sure. of expand from there. But there are a lot of really great resources for these sort of things um, at our centers as well as in Syracuse, such as Ophelia's Place. And they have yeah. groups there as well. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to welcome men. It really is a, a new thing. But the more we talk about it, the more we advocate for it. And if we do speak about it at the show, I think it really will help people. So Yeah, I think so too. For sure. That's great. Yeah, I think the more that you can put stuff out there and, and right. kind of not, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like put it in people's faces, you know, yeah. and not obnoxiously, of course, but to like, Hey, this exists. Yeah. Just so you know, yeah. guys are included too. And it's okay That's to right. talk about it. It's okay to get help. So yeah. Cool. Okay. So give us the, the details. How can people access you? How can they support you? How can they find out more about the event? Is there a website? Is there a phone number? Where should they be going? All right. So we have, right now um, on Facebook, we have the model call page up, which it says model call for the fab show, I believe mm -hmm. is the title. If you look on there, it has all the detailed info. It has my email. It has my intern Jenna's email um, and numbers to call our office. Our number is 315-207-5435, I believe. <laughs> off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great resource too, because if you call our office, they can talk to me or to Jenna as well. Um, and yeah, for now, that's what we have um, until we get our everything more solidified, then we'll have the official event page up there. Mm -hmm. But we've gotten a great response so far. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on Thank the show. You. Yeah, it's been really great to have you here and I really wish you a lot of luck and we'll um, be following up with you too to see how it's going. And you know, you're always welcome to contact us and say, hey, we're doing this thing or we want to follow up and, and uh, to bring you back on the show would be awesome. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Becky Brennan. Thank you, Becky. Tonight's episode of On the Porch Radio Hour is brought to you by Towels. <laughs> That's right. Have you ever gotten out of the shower and realized that you left your towel in the closet or hanging on its hook? Every day. And in central New York winters, isn't it the worst than to have to leave the bathroom in search of your towel? Well, think about how they felt back in 17th century Bursa, Turkey. <laughs> where archaeologists and towel historians alike can undisputably inform you that towels were invented there and shipped all across the world. Think about what happened up until the 17th century when there weren't any towels. We can only come to one conclusion. There was no washing. <laughs> Why 
would there be? It's like we didn't have lungs before oxygen was invented. Why would we have showers before towels were invented? It's like putting the cart before the horse, and that was one thing they just wouldn't do in the 17th century. <laughs> so, we don't know his name, but we're sure it was a man who was tired of wanting to be clean but not be wet. <laughs> so he wove together some wonderful fibers, absorbent, soft, fresh, lush, dry. <laughs> and when that towel then became too much full of holes and too ripped to use as a towel anymore, the washcloth was invented. <laughs> All around the same time. And of course, it was the inventors of towels that then brought you dish towels, hand towels, washcloths, and shop rags. Shop rags didn't really become a thing until around the 18th century, when the man that was using his towel, his wife decided to go out while he was in the bath and go shopping. Therefore, she needed a shop towel. <laughs> so the next time you're in the bath, the shower, the hot tub, the sauna, the locker room, think about 17th century Bursa Turkey. And think about what it would be like to be weightlifting with your buddies and then go into the locker room with no towel. Who would be there to whip your behind with the frayed end of a wet towel? Not me. So dry off. Get back in the water and get wet again and dry off again because that's the way they wanted it in Bursa, Turkey. Clean, fresh, and dry. And if you're one of those people that's in too much of a hurry to dry off your back before you're on a... Too much of in a hurry. <laughs> if you're one of those people that's in the middle of a radio show and has to keep restarting, and the sweat is running down your back and your shirt starts to stick. Thank towels. Thanks towels. And when you get out of the shower and you try to put on your shirt without drying off and it only makes it past your neck. Thank towels. Towels, a long lasting support of the world is now connected with On The Porch Radio Hour. Dry off and be fresh America. Enjoy your towels. <laughs> You're listening to On the Porch Radio Hour. We'll be back in a moment. This is what's happening in central New York. The 5th Annual CAC Chicken Wing and Micro Brew Festival will be held Friday, February 12th at the Lake Ontario Conference Centre. All proceeds from the event benefit the Child Advocacy Centre of Oswego County. Visit oswegowingfest.com for details. <coughs> The Fab Fashion Show will be held at SUNY Oswego. Feeling Authentically Beautiful will be a celebration of authentic beauty featuring models of many shapes, sizes, ages, and ethnicities. For more information, search for The Fab Show on Facebook or call 315-207-5435. The Oswego Music Hall welcomes the Sultans of String on February 6th and Little Toby Walker on February 20th. The Music Hall also hosts open mic nights on February 5th with Cam Caruso and February 19th with Colleen Coteau. And on February 12th, The Hook returns, featuring Gavin Bell with Evan Segroy, Donna Colton with Sam Patarelli, and the Garafalo Brothers. Visit oswegomusichall.org for more information. 
Fulton Community Theater presents The Mating Game from February 5th through 14th at Tavern on the Lock. Visit FultonCommunityTheater.org or call 315-592-2661 for more information. The Collette Theater and Conference Center is hosting an evening with Grammy Award winning songwriter Mark Cohn on Friday, March 18th, as well as upcoming screenings of Straight Outta Compton, The Goonies, and Bridge of Spies. To find out about these and other events at the theater or to purchase tickets, visit ColletteTheater.com or call 315-298-0007. Lakeside Artisans in Oswego offers a paint night on February 8th and March 14th at 7 p.m. For more information, call 315-342-8880. Warm Up Oswego will be held on February 6th. There will be raffles, vendors, contests, and live performances all day. Visit warmuposwegofestival.com for more information. The CNY Arts Center holds the fifth annual Family Fun Snow Day today from 10 until 3. There will be carnival games, crafts, and concessions, as well as special appearances by the cast of the upcoming production of Susical Jr., the Art Center also presents A Night at the Tonys as part of the 2016 Dessert Theater Series. The first event will be held February 13th. The Art Center offers a monthly writer's cafe where writers of all ages can come and share their work in a casual setting. The next cafe is tomorrow at 6 p.m. For more information about these as well as other projects and events at the CNY Art Center, visit cnyartcenter.com. The Wooden Apple Farmstead is the home of Red Room Sessions, a time for songwriters, musicians, and anyone else who wants to build their musical skill and knowledge to get together. We share songs we are working on, bounce musical ideas off each other, and we usually have time to just play a little music. This is a supportive environment where all levels of songwriting and musical experience are welcome. The next session is tomorrow at 6 p.m. For more information about Red Room Sessions or other events and projects, visit Wooden Apple Farmstead on Facebook or call 315-591-0711. Back for a return engagement. I am super excited to have Jim Schaefer back on the porch. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and it's really, really, really cool to have you on this time because we're promoting, well, yeah, I guess we're all here to promote. We're promoting your new album, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just got just to actually picked it up from the uh, recording studio today. So awesome. So it'll be on its way to getting reproduced. It's already done. Already done. You got just picked it. Oh, so yep. baby. Awesome. We're putting some out in the mail. Hopefully tomorrow to some of the people who helped help get it Kickstarter campaign get theirs out to them first, and then start mailing out other people. So nice, nice. How how did you um? How'd you enjoy the Kickstarter experience? That was went really well. You yeah, know, I, was, I was lucky. I had some people really kick in and uh, help me out big time. So yeah. it made made my life a lot easier. Believe yeah, me. Yeah, that's awesome. Had you ever done anything like Kickstarter before? No, no, it's the first time I ever tried anything like that. So okay, so it actually worked out well. Good. Oh, so where where was the recording studio? Where'd you record? Uh, Subcad Studios in Syracuse yeah. with our. Well, then Ron Keck, uh, he, he did all the uh, mixing and mastering and stuff like that. Okay. And had a, had a lot of really good musicians with me. I had Gina from from here. I had Denise Knight. Mm -hmm. I had um, Joe Palacostro on bass, Rob Orioli. I had Kay Miracle was also a guest here. She, oh, neat, yeah. She's on, one, she's on a song. And I had uh, Big D, Dave Schneider playing guitar in a couple of them. So yeah. it actually had a lot of really, really talented musicians donated their time. So it was a real cool experience yeah that's awesome that's a real all-star cast that's cool how many uh how many songs are on there? there's six total nice six total yeah all originals so. yeah all originals that's exciting so uh after the recording experience and hearing the mastered copy when it was done um and and, and so from start to finish um is that something you think you might want to dive into again in the future? Yeah, it'll be it'll be a, be a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll yes. be a little while, but no, it was a lot of fun. Big learning curve, and yeah, sure. learned a lot, so it was, it was definitely a worthwhile experience. Yeah, yeah. Did you get a chance to um, to work with the other musicians much before you went into Yeah, we, uh, we got together only a couple times, actually, mm -hmm. and practiced, practiced the songs and, you know, okay. and, and worked, up, worked them up as best we could, but... Mm -hmm. 
you know, for the amount of time we've got into it and what we came out with, I think we ended up with a really good product. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, and it's titled Broken. Broken, right after the song that you sang to at the beginning of the show, right? Right. It's uh, it's dedicated to my son Hunter, who's got brittle bone disease. Okay. So. Yep. Man. Yeah, we got to see him the other day. He was in yep. for uh, for lessons. Which yeah, he's is, actually taking sing, singing lessons from Gina. So that's awesome. Yeah, that way he can sing and I can play guitar. <laughs> that's right. I like the <laughs> I like those uh, those father son connections are nice, Max. I mean, Jim. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, how long have you been? Writing the six, like how, when did you write your first song that's on this album? Actually, the first song that I wrote was, I wrote back in, uh, I started it in 19, about 75. I finished it in 92. Oh my gosh. That was Drowning. That was the first song I ever wrote. I recorded it on this album. Okay. But then the rest of my, probably within the last two years, I wrote them all. Okay. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, it took a long break between the first song and the, and the other one. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the first time is always the hardest, and it takes energy. Uh, after having that song for such a long time, uh, do you feel like it evolved and morphed and, and kind of changed with the times and, the, and your, the way that you play and sing, or, you know, did it stay pretty consistent from the it, 70s it actually stayed pretty consistent you mm -hmm. know it really did um because it was uh, when i when i first started writing it um the song's called called drowning and i was living on beach road on the south shore of Oneida lake oh, nice. and the lake was up high on one side and the swamp was on the other in the springtime they would meet mm -hmm. and we, we would have to walk a mile with hip waders to our house every day yeah no and doubt that's what that's what started the song wow that's cool. That's really cool. Are you so? Are you gonna play another song from this album then? Yeah, I'm gonna play uh, the last song on it. It's called Why Oh Why. Awesome. Let's hear it. Thanks, Jim Schaefer. <laughs> Chances, yeah. Come on, dance with me. Come on, dance with me. Come on now, babe, dance with me. Don't you know you could be dancing? 
the waves on the sea. Take a leap now, take some chances. Come on, home, dance with me. Come on, dance with me. Come on, my baby, dance with me. Why you gonna be so melancholy? Why you gotta be so blue? Sail around, lost and low, homely. Feel there's nothing you can do. Why you gotta be so blue? Why gotta be so blue? Why, why, why? Why, why, why? Why, 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 why? Thank you. Pleasure to have Jim Shaper around and on the show. So thanks for being here. Oh, that was funny. I was dragging Jim Shaper around. That was cool. <laughs> so anyway, Gina, now I want you to stick around. Yeah. Place a little number.
September 1998, uh, the community members of Tonka Hogan woke up to see a headline on the Tonka Hogan newspaper that it would be one year from that day that Starbucks was planning to open up a coffee shop right there in town. It wasn't a big article, it just kind of had all of the details, where it was going to be built, when they would be breaking ground, and of course it talked about all of the wonderful drinks. <clears throat> but the question on everybody's lips was, what about our Tonka Hogan tea? What's going to happen there? Myrtle, at the hardware store. It's just an old woman, kids moved away, husband had died years ago, 
but you could be sure that on any given day you you might be convinced that Myrtle is still the cartwheel champion of Tonka Hogan at 89 years old and she just volunteered her time at the hardware store because that's where her husband liked to go and she would rearrange the saw blades and sometimes they might catch her counting and weighing the nails different sizes galvanized screws wrenches she spent a lot of time looking at wrenches and sockets she loved how they fit and how they were made to fit but the thing that she was most known for was Tonka Hogan tea and of course it was a secret recipe and nobody knew really what she put in it other than you might walk in to the hardware store and smell it 5 30 a.m. brewing on the four coffee pots that they had next to each other on the counter it was definitely coffee and you might be able to peer in through the window and watching her scoop out very meticulously from that old Ziploc bag counting out her scoops and then looking over her shoulder just to drop in a couple of tea bags and she liked to tease everybody by letting the little paper label that was on the opposite end of the string from the tea bag they would just hang hang out of the coffee filter when she shut the door just kind of dancing and twinkling like some kind of tinsel on a Christmas tree every time you open the hardware store door little white squares dancing on the top of the coffee pot but then you go over you drop your 50 cents through that little slit cut in the plastic lid of a very very old coffee tin you could always hear it hit on top of what sounded like a bottomless pit full of quarters everyone's 50 cents of course you'd go to the diner right next door to the hardware store and of course they brewed coffee but they only brewed coffee because it was a diner and that's what you're supposed to do they'd have a pot of decaf which was typically regular and a pot of regular and you could watch them pour it right around the same time that Myrtle was making hers and then you could go back into the diner 12 hours later for dinner and you could be sure that just because those two coffee pots were two or three cups less than when you saw them at 5 30 in the morning it wasn't because somebody had drank it it was just because sitting on that burner all day makes the water evaporate and so if you wanted something like hot fudge consistency that was your place but if you wanted something really good to drink just the perfect amount of caffeine incredible amounts of flavor and if Myrtle caught you even putting one drip of milk or cream into that coffee she just give you that cold stare and that nice hot cup of coffee would crystallize across the top just freeze and your coffee, your Tonka Hogan tea, would never taste the same again. Not that Tonka Hogan folk are really superstitious, but I guarantee you that if you saw Myrtle stare and then you heard that story and you tasted Tonka Hogan tea, you may never even let the words cream walk across your lips again. Just in case Myrtle's the next aisle over organizing the saw blades or sanding that 
fine grain of those wooden handled hammers. Which was always strange. Nobody knew why she did that. I mean, who wants to swing a brand new hammer with a really, really smooth handle? I'll tell you that the guy standing 10 feet from you doesn't want you to. Because it comes flying out of your hand. I don't think that Myrtle thought it was funny. Or some kind of a practical joke. No, no, the family theory around my house was that she assumed that her husband sanded all of his wooden handles. Nobody ever really had the heart to break it to her that those hammers that he'd been using for some 60-something years had really glassy, smooth handles because he'd used them millions of times. And those rough hands of his would sand anything. But she was a sweetheart. And you didn't talk to her about that kind of stuff. You dropped in your quarters. And you took your cup of Tonka Hogan tea and you walked down the street. And not a single person wanted to walk out onto Main Street. And smell whatever it was that Starbucks was brewing. Now granted, it was still a year away from being opened. But it wasn't a year away from when they were going to break ground. And the folks of Tonka Hogan knew that if they broke ground, they were going to follow through. So something equivalent to what you might see to a group of folks trying to save a rainforest was what the scene looked like. When everybody finally made it to the spot where they said they might be breaking ground. No, this coffee chain was not coming into Tonka Hogan. No, you'd never see a cup of that in anybody else's hands. Not in this town. And with linked arms, singing the town's theme song, their motto, carrying massive signs, mostly to the effect of signs that are just way too long to actually be signs. You never made it to the end. You got the gist. Something along the lines of, we want Tonka Hogan tea or nothing, and we don't want any other coffee in this town. Oh shoot, the local grocery store didn't even sell coffee. If you wanted to brew your own cup, you had to leave and sneak it back in. And be thankful that the rumors were not true. But there was talk of putting up border patrol booths with that big red and white striped arm thing that drops down and doesn't let you drive through until they let the coffee can sniffing dogs through your car. No, they took it serious. And the biggest thing on everybody's mind was, we will win, and we will have to have meetings to appoint whoever it is that's going to carry on the legacy of Tonka Hogan Tea, because once we win, then this has to be. And if Myrtle goes, oh, we don't even want to think about it. But if she goes... That secret recipe can't go with her. So when those folks in the really long overcoats and those really shiny, black, smooth bottom shoes got out of their black cars and started walking around the site that, where they wanted to put their new coffee shop, you can be sure that they had some looks of shock on their faces. It had been really dry. So why was it that where they were directed to park and get out of their car, there was three inches of mud? Well, they didn't ask questions. They just knew that they needed to go and they needed to wade through the waves and waves of people singing songs that you could 
definitely tell we're made up the night before about Tonkahogan tea and coffee and what these folks in the ties could do with their coffee. Also, another time you may have recognized some looks of shock and bewilderment as they thought about, could you actually get coffee in there? Well, they didn't want to think about it. They didn't want to put their coffee there. And they didn't want to listen to any more threats. So they agreed to having a town hall meeting. They pitched that it would bring people into town, which would bring money. It would offer employment and benefits. Nobody cared about that. Shoot, if I need a job, I'll go next door and ask my neighbor. Because that's what we do in Tonkahogan. Why put up another brick building that's not going to get any business and close within three months? Then what are we going to do with that space? We can't turn it into a hockey rink. It's too small. We wouldn't be able to turn it into a storage shed because it's too nice and there's too many windows. Fast forward that year. When it came time for the ribbon cutting to spring open the doors of this new coffee chain, start serving their delicious fair trade beans. The only ribbon that could be found in that big square that had been marked off a year ago was a ribbon that somebody had hastily stapled to a wooden post and had driven into where some of those muddy footprints would have been a year before. Well, you better believe that that space was still wide open. Not a single brick. Not a single smell of anybody else's roasted beans or welcome to this coffee chain and how can I help you? No, none of that existed. Just a wooden post with a ribbon. But they wouldn't be cutting that ribbon. You might find that ribbon if you drive into Tonkahogan sitting on a little coffee pot stand in the back of the Tonkahogan Museum in a little glass case and in that coffee pot hanging out of the filter you'll see some strings little white squares that dance every time you open the museum door and on the bottom of that little glass case it's the word myrtle it was a hair ribbon that had been myrtles for a long time when her grandkids were going through her stuff they started making jokes about ribbon cuttings and coffee shops that had been turned away and decided not to build in Tonkahogan. And even though they didn't need to sneak down in the middle of the night with winter caps on, they did. And they stuck that post in the ground and they stapled that ribbon to the top. So when you walk into the hardware store, and you see one of Myrtle's grandkids brewing up four pots of Tonkahogan tea. You open that door, and the wind comes in. You keep your mouth shut, and you listen real hard. Because those little paper squares are like wind chimes clinking out. This is my home, this is my only home, this is the only sacred ground that I have ever known, and should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden. 
Rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. And once again, we've made it to the end of a riveting, a most exciting episode of On the Porch Radio Hour. I want to thank Jimmy Schaefer for bringing in his hot air balloon and picking up Becky along the way. You were both fantastic. Jim, it's always good to hear your music and always good to see your face and your support at the Wooden Apple Farmstead. Becky, thanks for being here and bringing us information about FAB and doing all the great things you're doing for our community. And I want to thank everybody that's listening on Concert Window and everybody that logs in to www.ontheporch.weebly.com and listens to our shows archived right there under the Watch and Listen tab. And I want to thank especially all of the folks that come to the Wooden Apple Farmstead and listen live. And when you come next week to listen live, you will not be coming on Thursday. Oh, no, sir. You'll be taking yourself to bed on Thursday and making sure that you're getting a lot of rest and then doing the same thing Friday. Because Saturday, you're going to be getting up. You're going to be taking yourself out of the house, and you're going to be going over to warm up Oswego where On the Porch Radio Hour is going to be recording live at 11.30 a.m. So find your way and be there, because it is going to be awesome. We're also going to be on site at the CNY Arts Center on March 10th, so come out and see that show, too. And some of our upcoming guests for On the Porch Radio Hour are Kenzie Chapman, Jesse Nyoti, Jess Tietro, Kyle Osman, Lisa Emmons from Mother Earth Baby, and Emmy's Closet, Heather Plyler from Soul Hooping, and the Susical Junior cast from the CNY Arts Center. Is there more, you asked? That's silly. Of course there is. On February 18th, you are going to come out to the Wooden Apple Farmstead because we will be recording live, our 50th live recording. So February 18th, get yourself out of the house again and come over to the Wooden Apple Farmstead because we're going to be celebrating our silver anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know. You got the wrong crowd. <laughs> yeah, crickets. <laughs> but it'll be something. You look up what the 50th anniversary is, and then you bring me your answer written in paper, addressed to On the Porch Radio Hour, with the drawing of a frog, a stick of bubble gum, and a green wire paper clip, and you'll win a prize. But until then, Peace to your journey. <laughs> On the Porch is a production of the Wooden Apple Farmstead with host and writer Matthew Wood. Our musical director is Gina Holsoffel. Our stage manager is Ray Monet. Our sound technician is Maxwell Wood. This week's show is recorded live at Wooden Apple Farmstead in Palermo, New York. This week's guests are musician Jim Schaefer and Fab Fashion Show organizer Becky Brennan. Find information about past shows being on the porch and much more online at ontheporch.weebly.com.